Hi there, the first time I saw one of these devices, a Dirty Wave M8, was a few years back when Jeremy Blake, uh, commonly known as Red Means Recording, had one in his hands. I think it was a prototype, and I thought that looks so cool, but how on earth can you do all that with just eight buttons? And uh, I was intrigued to know uh, how that could be done, and obviously it can be done. Just so you know, I'm coming to this as a professional musician with a good knowledge of music theory and sequencing, but no experience at all of LSDJ on a Game Boy games console, which was the origin of this device. But believe me, that's not a problem, as you will see. If you are at all like me, you might find this video helpful. This is for you if you are contemplating getting one of these and you're not quite sure about how it works, or if you've just bought one. In this video, I'm going to explain everything in plain English so that by the end, you will have a basic grasp of the Dirty Wave M8. Please bear in mind that I'm just scratching the surface here, but this will give you a really good overview of the device and you'll then be able to decide whether or not you want to take the plunge and dive deeper. So what is the Dirty Wave M8? Well, it's a music sequencer with four built-in synthesizers, a sampler, and the facility to control and be controlled by an external MIDI device. Everything you do on the device is by means of these uh, buttons, very satisfying clicky buttons, and the tiny touch screen. Although this can be output to your computer screen, that's what I'm doing here, via third-party software for easy viewing. And it's easy to set up. You just use something called Touch Designer. I, I got it up and running in about 10 minutes. We're in what is known as Song View here, and you can see the eight tracks running along the top and track number one has got uh, that first chain highlighted. Chain number 10, we'll get back to that. So yeah, every song has eight tracks, which can have multiple chains of phrases running vertically, and each phrase can contain up to 16 notes, which are initially placed one on each step, which also run vertically. You're not limited to placing the 16 notes on these 16 steps, as each of the steps can be further subdivided into six ticks, giving you a possible 96 positions in each bar to place your notes by means of the grooves and other methods. So there, this is the song view, so you can see the eight tracks. The numbers that you can see there, 10, 20, there's nothing in this track, 40, 50, these are chains. And so if I go into the next view, which is the chain view, by pressing uh, shift and right, that's chain 10, and that's saying phrase 10. So I've got phrase 10 in chain 10, and you know I will explain all this in due course when I come to uh, show you how to put a song together. But hit shift and right again, you're in the phrase view, and here you can see on the left hand side, you've got these 16 steps in hexadecimal, naught to F, and these are the notes placed on those steps, C4, C4, etc. And moving over to the right, you've got volume and which instrument it is. So yeah, on each of the 16 steps of a phrase, each note has five parameters which can alter the sound of the note. So that's the note itself, that's the volume. So it's 64, then we have 01, that's instrument 01, and then you've got these three effects lanes. And these effects are in addition to the standard chorus, delay and reverb. So don't think of these as you know being like the normal effects you think of there are an unbelievable array of them which can be applied by very different amounts to every step on every phrase. So if I hold edit and you can see ARP has come up, that's an arpeggio that you could set on that note. But if we go up from there, so keep holding edit and you can go down through all the different effects and I won't go through them now but you've got sequencer effects, loads of those, mixer effects, loads of those, and current instrument effects, loads of those that go on the back. So these effects, which are too numerous to list here, nearly 100 include arpeggios, note delays, grooves, pitch bend, extra control over chorus, reverb, pan, chants, the list goes on. There is a further level on which notes can be manipulated, and that's via tables. So if I come across to the next view by holding shift and right, that takes me to the instrument view, where you can set up your instrument. If I come across one more, that takes me to the table view and like I say this is uh, another level and it's fairly complicated I'm not going to deal with it here just to say it's another level of sequencing on top of the basic sequencing so the basic hierarchy largest to smallest is song chain phrase and then in the phrase you've got the step and then table 
This analogy might help you understand an M8 song better. Think of it as eight parallel railway tracks running from north to south. The chains are like trains of railway carriages on the tracks. So if you're looking across here, we've got all these chains. Okay, you've got another train there, another train there, another train there. And then if we go into the, the chain, the phrases, if you like, are the individual carriages and you can have up to 16 of these in each chain. So up to 16 carriages in your train. To take this even further, the carriages, the phrases, if you like, have 16 parallel rows of seats, which are the steps, with six seats in each row, and which are sitting from left to right, of the note, the volume, the instrument, and then the three effects. You can't tell by looking at a chain in the song view like we're doing now, how long it is, i.e. how many phrases it has. For that, you have to go into the chain view and there you can see that this chain has got four phrases in it. Phrase 10, phrase 10, phrase 10, and then phrase 11. If you look at an M8 song playing, you may see multiple playheads at various points as different tracks and chains on those tracks are at different points. There is no single timeline as you could have one track with a single phrase looping in a chain whilst other longer chains that are strung together on other tracks take longer to complete. So if you watch this song being played, you'll see track three over here has only got one chain in it. So that's just gonna keep repeating while the other ones carry on. Let's, uh, let's show you this, let's play it. Keep your eye on track three, you'll see the playhead stays there while the other ones drop down. See, so on track three, that phrase is Being repeated over and over again. And if you're wondering what these FEs are uh, here and here, those are empty uh, chains, and that's just to make sure things keep running smoothly, and that's something for another video. If you look over to the far right, you can see that you've got the eight tracks. As I move across the tracks, Keep your eye on the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers that are vertically displayed. And you'll see as I move from track to track, the blue drops down as each track is highlighted. So if I go back up to track number one, I'm gonna show you how we can mute and solo individual tracks here. So if I press play, I'm gonna hold option down and press shift, let go. Now you can see that track one is muted and there's an M up here by the one. Now to unmute it, I'm gonna hold option, shift, go. And now track one is back in. Obviously you can do that on more than one track. Now I'm gonna show you how we solo a track. So soloing is done with option and play button. So this button here is option, this is play. So we'll set it in motion. So hold the option button down, hold the play button down. Now you can do it temporarily just by letting go. But let the option button go first before you let go of the play and then that's solo. So all we can hear at the moment is track one solo. You can see the S up here. So hold option down again, press play again. Go and your uh, solo has been cancelled and again you can do multiple uh, tracks like I said earlier every single one of the 16 steps in every phrase can play a different instrument chosen from four built-in synthesizers a sampler or external MIDI up to 128 instruments per song are allowed with some being modified copies of other instruments if you prefer so if I take you to um, track 2 that's an empty chain. I'm going to drop down to chain 20, go into that, go into the phrase. Now, if you look at this, as I move down, you'll see this particular step, step four, has got instrument two on it, and this one down here has got instrument nine. If I just play this phrase just by pressing the play button, you can hear two different snares. And this is part of the fun with the, uh, the M8, that you can get a different instrument on every single step, which is amazing. That's so powerful, isn't it? So here I've got 
instrument two on step four and I've got instrument nine on step C okay uh, remember it's hexadecimal and I've got different volumes I've got 7f for this one and I've got 64 for this one uh, if I go into the instrument for instrument two just shift and right you'll see this is sampler this is called snare come back drop down to this one come over to this one this one's called big snare see? so you know just gives you a brief idea of the power of this thing let's go back to the mixer view which allows you to amongst other things mix the eight tracks relative to each other so you get to the mixer view uh, from any of the kind of ground level views by holding uh, shift and down and that's the mix view now the output volume is showing f2 so that's the overall output of the ma and then of course down here we'll just stop it for a second if i move down these are the uh, individual sliders individual faders if you like for each track so if i run it i'll turn down this uh, snare or snare again So you can change the uh, volumes. Down here you can change the amount sent to the uh, chorus delay and reverb. Over here you've got quite a nice thing which I, I quite like, which is, which is the DJ filter. Uh, if I scroll down to it, DJ F, which is here. And if I run the track and bring this up and down, you'll hear that it's the classic DJ filter. So I'll read it. So there it's disappearing as the filter. Is changing then bring it back 80 is the default really thin make it really dull lots of fun now if we come down one more uh, level to the effect setting uh, you can see that there are three main master effects chorus delay and reverb I, I spoke of these earlier which can be applied to each instrument in different amounts both to the whole instrument and on a per step basis that's immensely powerful, isn't it? So as I also said earlier, you can have up to 16 rows of phrases per chain. So we've got phrase 20 here on the first four, naught to three. You can have 16 rows of these. So that gives you a total of 256 steps per chain. In turn, you can have up to 256 chains per track. So if we go back to the song view, I could scroll down and I could just keep going. Um, go all the way up to F. F I think FF there we go so that's 256 chains per track in each song which is more than enough at most projects I reckon that's 65,536 steps per track everything on the M8 can be copied and pasted for quick arrangements this allows for very complex songs to be constructed with fascinating interplay between the tracks especially if chains of different lengths uh, are happening as this means one track could be say 16 chains long with different amounts of phrases in those chains and another could have a shorter amount of change which could be looping all the while and I showed you that earlier didn't I empty chains can be inserted to ensure that everything runs the way you want because if the M8 sees an empty slot in either the song or the chain it will simply return to the top of the current group of chains in the song or phrases in the chain and start looping this method allows for precise mathematical sequencing which would prove very difficult if not impossible in a standard linear sequencer like logic or reason where notes appear on a timeline left to right this is not to say that the operation of the m8 is dry geeky and scientific but on the contrary it's fun intuitive and musical Eight tracks, of course, seems fairly limiting, but due to the flexibility of the device, economical sequencing can be achieved in various ways. For instance, you could input the kick drum, snare drum and hi-hat all on one track, as long as those instruments are placed on different steps in the phrase. Percussion loops can be placed on one track, and these can often contain all the elements you need for a drum beat. Whole sections of tracks, even the whole song, can be resampled and reintroduced to save several tracks. You know, it's very flexible. Remember, inputting a three note call could eat up three precious tracks, so the use of whole called samples on a single track might be a better way to go. Also, many of the built in synths have ways of generating chords from a single note. 
You can export the various tracks of a song as stems, which you can then place in your door of choice for extra mixing and manipulation. Of course, you can add to any basic idea you have created in the M8 in this way. Having said that, incredibly complex and detailed songs are possible on this instrument. You check out Mikey303 or Jeremy Blake on YouTube and you'll see what I mean. You can also export the whole of your song as a WAV file and create bundles where everything to do with the song is enclosed in a zip file which also includes all the samples used in the song. And this is perfect for passing your song on to another M8 user. There's no doubt about it, this thing is an amazing device. The sound quality is great and to be honest, like a lot of complex pieces of equipment, you only get out what you put in. With time invested and patience, the rewards will be great. I thoroughly recommend the Dirty Wave M8. I'm not sponsored by the company and I pay for this thing with my own money. Thanks very much for watching. Please check out my other M8 videos in the playlist on my YouTube channel. I'll end by playing this song all the way through. Just to say in that last bit, you saw uh, that sin pad on track eight playing three note chords. I'll just play that bit again because that's quite interesting, isn't it? You can see the chords, actually four note chords. In fact, you can see the chords on the keyboard there.